So these grips look pretty rough. Uh, I think I put some water blocks on these a while back. And they look pretty good. But these grips are pretty dry. It's an old gun. This side doesn't look too bad. This side looks pretty bad. So I'm going to pull these off and put a little uh, tongue oil on them. So that's them pulled off. Pretty dry on this side. And uh, this one looks pretty dry. They almost look different. Let's see what they look like after I get some tongue oil on them. Hey, young people. Let's uh, finishing up a couple projects here. So, uh, let's see if I can get this to where I can see this. I'm going to, we're going to make this a revolver video, but I have a couple other things. So I'll slide in what this, uh, what those grips look like before. I took a couple of quick shots. So they're still drying. They're, they're pretty much dried, but um, I don't know. Man, it gets really dark there for me. I can't see nothing. But this is what the, uh, the grips look like. In the old Smith & Wessons, uh, they used to put the, the serial number on the grips, which is kind of cool. So you knew the grips were original. So these are still drying a little bit. I put some tongue oil on it, and they're kind of drying. So uh, we're going to put those to the side and let them finish drying over here. So they're out of the way. Get my that out of the way. Uh, this is a, a video coming up on this trigger. It's called a blackout trigger. And the instructions are pretty, um, how do I say, non-existent. Uh, so anyway, I'll cover this in this uh, in the trigger video. But let me tell you. Um, and then I'll, and I'll go out and I'll test this and see if it's uh, going to, uh, oh, let me get my little Allen wrench in there. All right, so we'll just put this in there right now until I can get to it later. Well, crap, maybe I won't. All right, it's shut. We'll hang that right there because we're going to get to it later. So let's, uh, oh, also, uh, shit, I forgot this one. So I'll put some tongue oil on this also. This is an old uh, stock from my Marlin. I don't remember. I changed the stock on a little Marlin 22. And I had this stock, and it was looking kind of dry like it was thirsty. So I put a coat of tongue oil on it, too, and buffed it off. It came out okay. Uh, I think it looks nice. I mean, it looked pretty good before. Had a couple little things that weren't too nice. So that's kind of drying over here, too. Um, let me move that out of the way. Because I think it's pretty much dry. I did it before I did those grips, or the second coat on the grips. Oh, i got to put this back on the back end of it. Because that was... Uh, this wood, when you pull these pads off, if you never pull a pad off the back of a stock... Um, the, the wood underneath is untreated, so it was really, really dry. So I just threw a little bit of tongue oil on there. And I will uh, want to clean up these screws. A lot of people don't ever pull out these screws and clean them so they don't rust. Um, so I pulled them out. And, of course, I got a phone call. Hang on, Holmes. Okay. Let's try this again. I don't know where I was at. So I, I put this butt plate back on here. Um, put those two wood screws in, and now this is, I don't know what I'll do with this. Probably end up trying to sell it. If somebody's got a Marlin uh, 22 and they need a stock, let me know. <laughs> um, so let's get to this little uh, 38 here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that bad boy. So, taking apart, oh, this is just my knife. I was oiling it up and letting it soak in. You know how, how I like to put oil on things and let it soak in? So, I just kind of oiled this up, let it soak in. That's a great little knife. Any, any, any blade with a finger groove is a really great knife for 
because you're not going to lose it. That finger groove is just huge for not dropping your knife. Most people who stab, they end up cutting their hands because if you get your hands bloody, it slides off the knife and you cut your hand. So having this finger groove, nobody's going to take your knife away from you and you're not going to slide down and lower. But anyway, I digress. Let me uh, get rid of that. We'll just get that out of the way. So uh, when taking apart a revolver, um, I already took these screws off here and we're going to pull this plate off. Um, so this, these little screws right here will come off. You, you want to make sure you keep them in the same order that they were in. So I usually just put them in a one, two, three. Uh, this one is flat. These two are round. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure if they're the same size. I don't even know if I've checked to see if they're the same size. All right. Yeah, to be honest, they all look pretty much the same. But anyway, so uh, this plate right here that comes off, a lot of people don't pull it off. It's usually pretty rusty. I don't know if I cleaned this before or not. It sits right there on top of it. And uh, once you pull this plate off, you take those screws off. If it doesn't come off, you can hit it with a, a, a little rubber mallet on the side here, and it will help loosen it out. And then sometimes I will just get a little screwdriver, not hard, and just kind of like twist it in there and it will force it up. There's a little bitty pin on top of a revolver right there, that little notch. And that's got to go in first when you put it in. And when you're taking it out, you don't want to bend it or put a lot of torque on there because it's just a little bitty, little bitty piece there. All right. So uh, I'm going to clean both sides of that. And then th when you take out your, your hammer spring, uh, you have to cock it and there's a little bitty hole in the back and you have to stick something through that in order to keep that spring on there and oh man that's a tough spring so um, I don't even know if I'll pull that off because that's let me look at it and see how hard it is to how strong this spring is Yeah, that's pretty strong. I'm not going to pull that off. I'm just going to clean it like this. And then you have to, uh, oh shit, my little uh, thingy came off here. Crap, and I didn't see how that went. I'll have to go back and look at the video. I'm pretty sure it goes in here like so. <laughs> Anybody see where this came from? <laughs> I know it goes in this little aisle right here. It fits... Uh, how did this little sucker fit? So it fits in here like so. So it probably got stuck in there. And so this little thing. So if I just put this back on here, I'll be able to tell how it lays. So if it goes like that and it lays like this, this goes right in here. So I, I'll, I'll have to figure out where that goes. That's the problem when you take these little guys out is if things stick to it like so, you gotta, you got to be able to, and, and you know, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, that's going to go right in there like so. So uh, I'll clean those two pieces up. And I don't think anything else really comes out of here. I'm just going to oil this, get a Q-tip in here with some... Uh, it looks like it's oiled, but I don't know if that oil is from me or squirting down in there or if that's from cleaning. Okay, so I'm, it looks like I'm getting some pretty good dirt off here, so I'm assuming I've never pulled this off before because I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of dirt, which means I'm glad I pulled this off. Uh... And like always, anytime you get in these places, you want to get all the corners and cracks and make sure you get a good 
I forgot to shake up. Always shake up your brake free. See, it's clear tube, you remember to shake it up. Most people don't remember to shake it up when it's in a brake free tube. But you can tell it settles. So always shake up your, uh, your brake free. And usually I can tell by looking at it, it should, it should be cloudy. It shouldn't be uh, too clear. So I'm just really lubing and cleaning and making sure there's no, no rusty areas in here. That Q-tip did a, got a, quite a bit of dirt off it. Uh, some people will tell you to never take this off. I wouldn't take this off on a newer gun that I've kept clean and shot good ammo. I probably wouldn't pull this off. This is an old used gun with a lot of problems. So, um, this part, it had, had a lot of rust on it. I got it at, the, at a pawn shop. And it had some rust on it. I got it off. You can still see the pitting. Um, but, I mean, it's still, it's still a nice little old gun. And, uh, We're going to give it a good little oil bath. Now, there's some places in here that I can't really get to. And I'll see if I can't get that in this light here. So you guys can see what I'm cleaning here. Um, what happened to my spring? Oh, there it is. So I definitely want to... Get to that. This little guy. Alrighty, and uh, sometimes a Q-tip will go in better than a um, a pipe cleaner will go in better than a Q-tip. So I'm gonna lube up this pipe cleaner, and it it will probably get in places that the yeah I'm getting quite a bit of dirt because it's getting in a little bit of tiny places that. So you see right there on the hammer, I don't know if you guys can see that, right there that brown, it kind of looks like rust. But I think it's just that hardening where it's hardened. Because the hammer looks like it's forged hardened or whatever, it gets that color. So that brown there isn't coming off when I clean it. Now I could probably get a little steel wool and remove that. But because it's, I don't think it's rust, I'm not going to mess with it. Somebody else may go, I would, I would remove it to make sure it's not rust. Um, if I put a little steel wool on there. Let's see if I get any brown on this. I did get a little brown, but but it didn't really it didn't feel like rust because it's pretty smooth. Now this also had some um, some little rough edges right here that were sticking up to where the grip couldn't thing. It looks like somebody took it apart, dropped it, or it was rusted and pitted. But I could not rub my glove across here because of these sharp little edges. So what I did is I took a uh, just a little file and I just smoothed off those edges. I just ran this across here. This is where the grips go. And I took off those rough edges so my grip would fit better. And I forgot the name of what you call this file. It's got a little name to it. Schiffeld makes it, but I forgot the name of the... Uh, And that took off those little sharp edges. And uh, that's going to make my grip fit better. And it's going to 
uh, remove those points and it allowed me to get oil on there and uh, to where I, I don't have those sharp edges anymore. So uh, let's see if we can get this sucker back together. And I may have to go... Oh, I didn't clean this. Uh, oh, good thing I remembered that. That's nasty. So I forgot to clean the back part of this plate. Which appears to be pretty damn dirty. Woo! Doggies, look at that. Wow. Glad I remembered that. I'd have been bummed if I put that back together without it. Of course, I want to get the edges because these edges seal on these edges. So I want to make sure they have a nice clean spot to go back in there. So this looks a lot better. That's what that's going to look like. And I have not had a Smith apart in a long time, so I may... I need to clean this little sucker off. Because if all that was dirty, this little guy is going to be dirty. There we go. Get a Q-tip in there. Woo, look at that little Q-tip. <laughs> just that little bit. I just cleaned this and wiped it down. And because I didn't get this little hole... Where's that damn pipe cleaner? That'll get in there a little bit better. Now that dirt, because it's in here and it's on a moving part, it's uh, that would be critical to remove. So I gotta kind of try and oh, I didn't oil this back up, did I? Let me get a Q-tip on there and all that out. Remember, this oil is going to soak in just like it does on the outside. So it may look heavy now, but as it sits here, it's going to soak in and dry out. So this little guy is going to go here. Which means... This little guy's got a hook in, probably. So you can kind of see the working there if you want to look at it. See the parts that move? So working that tends to expose a couple other areas that I can get in there on. So even though I clean it just by moving it that little bit. This is probably the most I've ever taken down a revolver. Just I've never, if I pulled it off, I've done this much cleaning. That's it. I've never pulled all these pieces out. Now, I think I've had a couple of these pieces fall out before, but intentionally, I've never gone past this point. Um, because I'm just not what I would consider an expert. Um, I mean, for court purposes, I would be an expert. Remember, for court purposes, anyone that has more knowledge than the average person is considered an expert in court. Uh, so, I'm wondering if 
this doesn't go here. But I'm still trying to figure out what this little this little guy, I'll bet you that connects there. I bet you this is going to go over here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. But this little guy right here, I don't know what he connects to. Probably a slot right in here. Yeah, that's where he goes. Although that's kind of far. He's got to go on that pin. So this comes back down. I don't think that pin does go there. Wouldn't make sense of going the other way though. Let me go up. Yeah, it definitely doesn't go that way. So I need to go look and make sure exactly where this goes. Because it either goes this little piece here either goes here and I don't know where this this looks like it just hooks into this little hammer bar which would make sense when you pull the hammer back it pushes this down and that the spring pushes the hammer forward to fire the gun so this I'm, I'm okay with but this little piece right here I think the last time it fell out I had to go look it up because I forgot where it went <laughs> So I'm pretty sure it lays in there because it has to go flat. So if it lays in there, I just got to figure out which means it goes here, but where is this little piece? This is a little piece that I'm trying to figure out what's that connecting to. Somebody's probably already looked up on Google. I have all these experts in the comments telling me I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing here because I'm not... I don't take these guys apart a lot. Oh, okay, I see where this goes. This is it. This is your hammer block. This goes right up in here for your hammer block. So until you pull the trigger, ah, so this is your hammer block. So it can't go on that, although it looks like it should go on that, <laughs> but it can't. I don't know though. Maybe it goes on this little guy. That's the bad thing about working with gloves. I bet you it goes on that little guy. Ah, oh, it does go on that little guy. Okay. So I was trying to put it on this notch or this notch. But this little guy right here looks like where it would go because it's a hammer block. And when it goes up, it's going to block that hammer. So I'm pretty sure it goes right there. So I'm okay with that one. Now, if I can get this little guy here locked in. So here's, here's, the, here's the issue that I'm looking at here. While this is in here, it's hard for me to get this little guy on this pin where he goes right there. So if he goes here, it's not good. And if he goes here, but this has to be cocked in order for this to be in the right position. So I'm going to try it like this. Let's see how this works. Remember, it's got to go in forward first. And this pin has to go in this little groove.
Okay, so that's in there like so. And I know this is on the right piece right now. It's on that pin. So now I'm going to cock this in order to get pressure on this hammer spring. i got to cock this and hold this down. I mean, I could put the screws in. But I want to... So now that it's cocked and I know it's in the right spot, I'm going to pull my little wire out that got bent <laughs> and doesn't want to come out. Now, when I pull the trigger, that little hole is going to disappear right there. And now all the tension is on here and I know it's back in right. Okay, so we're good to go. So now all I need to do is uh, maybe get a little oil on these guys. Remember they were in one, two, three? So I would have put them back in one, two, three. Hope I remember hit play on there. <laughs> I've done this whole damn video and uh, it wasn't even recording. I've done that before too and it sucks, especially on long ones. All right, so I'm going to just start these by doing reverse threads. Reverse. Heard that click. I know it's threaded right. I just went like a half turn. Reverse thread. And get that started. Reverse thread. I'm not getting a click here. There it is. So now I'm just going to circle them down to where I get resistance. Resistance, half turn. Half turn resistance. So I'm feeling to make sure it's smooth. Feels pretty smooth. Feels pretty snug. Damn, that one went really tight. I'm surprised it's almost feels like it's stripped it went down so tight. This one stops good and solid. So this screw here, I'll take the cylinder off next. This one is good and tight, good and smooth, good and smooth up here. Alrighty. So we're back in business on this side. So this one front screw right here is where you remove your cylinder. So what happens when you open your cylinder, let me make sure this thing works. <laughs> okay, so it works. You notice back here the trigger, you can't see that little hole. And now when I cock it, it exposes that little hole that you stick a wire in so you can release the tension. That's how you got to start this thing. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this cylinder here. So you open your cylinder and this doesn't come out. And the reason it doesn't come out is that one screw there is holding it. So if we take this screw out, that screws out. Now this, your cylinder, will slide right out. So where that screw is going, 
when this is in, it's going right in there. And then that holds it from backing out. So that's what that little screw is holding there. So then once you have this out, you pull this piece out here, and that's a good tube that needs to be cleaning, that's neglected, that rarely gets cleaned. And then this thing, some of these will unscrew, some do not. I don't think this one unscrews. It just twists. So I'm just gonna be able to push and clean this, and there is a spring inside here that I wanna try and get a Q-tip down or whatever. Um, so I can get this down in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some oil down in there. Then I'm gonna stick this down in there. And I'm just gonna spin this around. And that's gonna clean that wall inside there. And that's gonna make your ejector, this is how you eject the bullets out, a lot smoother. Sometimes this piece will screw off too. If you screw this off, you can get this out and get to that spring. Um, this does not look like it comes out. But I can un I can try to untwist. Oh, I don't know. It got tight. Maybe it does come out. I think it does. So that just came out. There's one spring that goes on the plunger itself. And then there's another spring that goes on the outside. And then this piece will probably just slide right out now. And make sure there's nothing else in there. Okay, so now I can have good access to that hole. Uh, yeah, that's pretty dirty in there. So that needed a good little cleaning. So because it was spinning back and forth, it wasn't tight, I thought it went either way and I didn't keep spinning it to make sure. And um, that's how most of them come out is through a, uh, a little twisting like that. <laughs> I'm laughing because I, you people who are learning understand how I do shit and it's kind of sometimes just trial and error and whatever and I'll just do it and we'll figure it out and other people are like oh my god he doesn't know don't ever let this guy work on your gun he's crazy he doesn't even know what he's doing and he's gonna and he's <sighs> what I mean there's just so many safety sallies out there all right, so that's an area, this area is like rarely, rarely cleaned. Um, and I'm probably going to get a lot of dirt off this. Because I don't think I've ever taken this off since I bought it from, not too bad, since I got it from the pawn shop. Okay, not too bad. Let's see what this little guy does. Not too bad at all. Let's get a Q-tip down this guy. Not too bad. Get a little oil down there and do that again. Okay. That little guy cleaned up nice. I do not want to lose these two little springs. Believe me. This guy. So this cleaned up okay, but I don't know if you can tell. It looks a little, I don't know if that's rusty or a little dingy. So I'm going to hit that with a little steel wool. So this is what it looks like before. And again, I can't tell with the light on how much you guys are seeing.
and now if you look at this all that's gone and it's nice and smooth and that stainless steel just removed whether that was glue if somebody put WD-40 on this and it kind of caked on before if it was a little bit of rust that steel wool polished this up very nice and that's exactly what you want so now I'm going to put a little good coat of oil on there and this is going to really make this thing feel good so now this little this little spring right here I'm just going to clean him like this because he's so little I'm not going to mess with him too much I could probably stick a pipe cleaner down him yeah so he'll go over a pipe cleaner I'll squirt some oil on him then I'll twist him go back and forth on a pipe cleaner and pull him out and he's gonna go right back where he's supposed to go boom this little guy um, I don't think I can get a q-tip down in him maybe if I stretch it out and thin it out I can Let me pull some of that off. See if I can get this. Because I think the stick it yeah. So the stick itself will go down there. So I'm gonna put some oil on that Q tip. And we're just gonna clean this one this way. And that's gonna get the good inside nice and clean. And now I'm just gonna roll it over here for the outside. Okay. And that one goes right on in there. I clean that tube. I clean that. I clean that. I didn't clean this yet. That's where I got the most dirt right there. Just pulling this off right there. Woo! That was nasty. Very, very nasty. So that that's definitely where I got the most dirt. And I haven't stuck a Q-tip down here, I don't think, yet. Not too bad. I'm going to get a clean one with some oil on it. And this little old gun is going to breathe some good new life into it. Because it really had a good little cleaning everywhere. Alrighty, and I think I uh, cleaned that interior tube with oil, but I'm not sure. So we're going to do that again. I know I cleaned it, but I'm not sure if I put a coat of oil on it. Alrighty, let's see if we can get this sucker back together. Anybody remember how this goes? I think this little guy came out first. When you put this back on, you notice... There are two little holes on this spinner. And those two little holes got to go on the two things here. So let's make sure we get that right. There's one. There's two. There's the two holes. And the two holes went in the two little nipples that were on this. And this lays nice, flat, and flush, which is what you want. Okay? So we know that goes in there. Uh, this piece came out first because it screws into here. So this little guy must go in now. Then this guy goes here to compress that spring in there. And we need to start spinning. And because I got gloves on, it's not easy to get that started. <laughs> so, trying to get a reverse thread so I can get it started. 
And these gloves just ain't going to freaking work. There we go. All right. Got that twisted back on there nice. Get my glove back on here. So many, so much damn oil. So that's on nice and tight. It's all been oiled up nice. This has been oiled up nice. This goes back over that so it can go in like so. And then this little hammer. Did I clean this interior tube here? I don't remember if I did. Let me do that again. Make sure I clean that because I'm not real sure I did. Maybe somebody watching will remember. I'll tell you after I get this out whether I cleaned it. I did not clean that or it wouldn't look like that. Okay. I know that's clean. When you slide this back in here, you've kind of got to work this a little bit in order to get it to fall down. And then once it goes in level, always close it and make sure it's locked in right before you put that screw. You'll know it's in the right place if it's closed. Don't put the don't try and put the screw in with the yoke open. Okay? So it's closed, it's it's locked into place. Don't put that screw in like this when it's like this cuz if it if it moves or wiggles or rolls, you'll get the screw in the wrong spot. So once it's closed, now I'll put that screw in. Remember this screw is a double, reverse it, there's the click. That's in, we're good to go. This gun's a little beauty. This is my uh, screw for the grips. Once these grips finish drying, and they're they're almost dried, um, you will uh, I will put those grips back on, and that little sucker will be finished. All right. Maybe I'll do a, another. I'll add it on when I, when they're finished done. And I finish putting it back together. So hopefully you got something out of that. And uh, as you can tell. I don't take apart revolvers a whole, whole bunch, but anyway, we'll end out there. And there's the finished product. Cleaned up. Good to go. Grips are on. Nice and dried. We'll end out there.